this stream, I'm going to be demonstrating creation of pottery objects for your Oculus Home. The objects can be made in Dojagi Korean Pottery application and then converted with a script to the file format you need for the Oculus Home. And once you've converted them, you can also mess with them in Blender and Photoshop to put custom designs on them. So a custom design is what I'm going to do today. Let's get started. Wrong button. Let's try that again. Get the Oculus mirror out of the way. We'll go back into the app. A little tricky to get the streaming and all of the software and screen capture set up. So I'm going to load my existing workshop. Uh, that'd be this one. I like to use the workshop mode when I'm working on freeform projects. There's also some competitive type modes, more of a story mode game, but that's not necessarily what I want all the time. So it, you get to choose your workshop area. <laughs> Having cord problems. Okay. Get my cords out of the way of my hands. Yeah, this would be great if it was cordless. Okay. So you get to choose your workshop. Um, in this case, I'm in a Asian style little workshop space. And you can teleport around like you'd be used to from Oculus Home. There's actually some animated birds outside, and you can hear the birds tweeting. It's quite pretty. Uh, you can sort of go outside a little bit. So you can stick your head out and look around. It's really quite a beautiful layout. Of course, your shadow's just hands. And this is just, this one's just an empty room. Real pretty though. And then back here we have the pottery area. And this is just all for decoration. More cool, pretty stuff to see. Come on over here. And it'll auto align with the clay area. So I need to make a shape I can decorate. I'm just gonna go for a pretty simple bowl today. Um, actually, maybe I'll do a jar. That shows a little bit more interesting shapes. So I'll do a small jar with a wide bottom and a narrow middle and a wider opening. So we set up the clay, decide on the size. Let's see. Probably want about that. And then this is used to start it. You can grab it and move it around like you would with your um, middle finger. And then your trigger finger is what actually lets you do it. And you go all the way forward, it's going to go really fast and it's going to be hard to work with. You pull it all the way back and it's going to stop. So we want to go just a little bit forward so it's going but slowly. That's a little too fast. Let's back it off a bit. 
There we go. Now these little drops showing up are for me to wet my hands. And then most of the activity happens with the grab handle pulled, so your uh, middle finger on the triggers on both of them. And then it just depends on the shape of your hand as to which activity you're doing. Actually, nope, this is the this is the gun trigger hand for the hand. So first fingers. And so you always make an indent first. Then you start working the side. And you can push down, you can push up, you can push in and out. I basically use my left hand as a guide on the outside and my right hand pushing down on the bottom and kind of bouncing up and down a little bit to work the edge. And then when you get it just right, it starts to form. And if you see it start to wobble into a triangle, you need to slow down your movements. Just hold very still. And as long as your mill is spinning slowly enough, it'll smooth itself back out. So we're going for a jar shape. Yeah. When you first start out, you're usually going to get dry hands fairly quick. So go over and splash them in the water some more and then continue. Pushing down in the bottom of it is kind of how you raise the height of the jar. And you can also push in to shrink it back in. Although the more manipulations you do, the more the math gets weird on tracking the shape of the jar and you can start to get glitches in the game. And eventually it will just collapse your jar. So in this case, I'm having a hard time making it go up today. Some of that might be difficulty with cameras tracking my hands. Okay. I'm pushing pretty hard and it's just not doing what I want. It's okay. I might show what it looks like when it collapses too. I'm getting a very wide jar. Almost a plate. And the amount of clay that you start with has some impact on what you can build, but not a whole lot. Mostly you just want to start with less clay when you're building small things, because otherwise all that extra clay gets in your way. Having some trouble getting the shape at the bottom, just what I want. Oh, see, now it's getting too big. It's getting wobbly. I've got to slow things down. Quit working it quite so hard. There we go. Smooth back out. Okay, well, I don't get the jar I was after this time. The game's kind of inconsistent with that. But I can get a nice big plate type thing. We'll work with that one first. Let's pull this edge out. There we go. Okay, you saw it kind of collapsed there a little bit. Let's see if I can smooth out this edge, get some of the ridges out of it. Yeah, see it's collapsing down. It's the total amount of clay is taken up going to fall back down towards the bottom. Sometimes if you start to have wobbles or trouble, it's because your hands got dry. There is an indicator for that, those drops that you saw, but it doesn't always come up as quickly as you'd like. This is a trimmer. Uh, you basically just hold it, squeeze the trigger to make it trim, and it'll smooth out the edge of this thing. Makes it a lot nicer, easier to paint. It also makes the pottery work more valuable for the in-game currency. Whoa, tracking difficulties. Um, I'm sitting in a chair and I'm fairly close to my desk, so sometimes the camera is losing me, which can cause some jitter. I'm going to take it here, smooth this out. Yeah, that's not very smooth. I think I'm making it worse instead of better. That's some of the glitches in the game I mentioned. OK, 
Okay, so we'll see what we get. I'm not expecting much, honestly. This is a pretty rough piece. Okay, so when we're done, we stop it from spinning, pick it up and take a look at it. Now, I'm trying to grab it. When I try to grab it by this part, it doesn't work. When I grab by this part, it does. Um, and when I grab by this part, it doesn't work. That means that basically from here on out, the material is too thin, mathematically speaking, for the game to understand that it's there. The game thinks I have a disc about that big. And look, you can actually see the cut where my trimming tool cut through it. So it doesn't really get what I, what it looks like. Um, we can what we see is not what's really there. Um, so I could discard it, or I can fire it and try to paint it, and you'll probably see what I mean. So I set it down, finish the throwing, confirm. Okay, the shape is now set. The shape cannot be changed. I can start painting it. Grab a paintbrush. Come on over here. There we go. Grab some paint. I like this light blue. Pick it up. Okay, let's see how much of it is here. Well, it went ahead and picked it up with paint, so it does actually still think it's there. Okay, so that worked. Okay, so I like the fast way of painting. Just to turn on the wheel. Come on, turn on the wheel. There we go. I start at the center. And just gradually move it out. Of course, I gotta move slower as you get that to the edge because I'll start to have more gaps in the paint from how fast it's spinning. So I move a little more slowly and let the paint catch up. Although it uses a brush, it paints more like a spray paint and that you never really have to refill your paint. You can see the gaps coming in the paint. If I turn the brush sideways, I get a bit less gaps. Better coverage. All right, continue to take it on up. to cover any holes that I see. All right, just pause. Oh, all the way stopped. There's a glitch. Yeah, it's part of the sunlight. Okay, if we look at the back side, you'll note it painted one side but not the other. Uh, the game is fairly good about that, although it's not perfect. Um, I can paint a nice ring around this outside part, which will probably, uh, tracking issues, will probably save me some time with the rotations because of how wide that area is. Yeah, I still get some skips by hand, but it's a lot smoother. Come on, cameras, pick up where I am. Okay. This game does work best if you have really good camera tracking in your VR space. You want to make sure your hands, when you're in your lap, your hands are not obscured from the camera. That can be difficult to do, especially uh, when you're throwing the pottery, because you have a tendency to lean over your work, and that has a tendency to cover your lap and cover your hands, and the VR cameras will have a really hard time detecting where you're at, and then you'll have a really hard time controlling the pottery. 
So you want to do everything you can to set up your space so that the cameras can track accurately. It also works best if your cameras are down low, um, if they're at table height rather than up above your head. Because at table height, they do a much better job, assuming they've got a clear line of sight, they do a much better job of tracking your hands. So you can paint these by hand when you want to. Um, the spinning wheel trick is really nice when you want certain types of designs, spirals especially, um, which I'm a fan of. So I've just about got the base layer wrapped up on this. And there's sort of a ridged pattern in the paint when you apply it here with the brush. Um, it causes the skipping that you see when things go too fast. But it also gives a nice brush texture to it. Um, you can switch to a smaller paintbrush. And this one is nice for um, supplemental accents and things. So I've picked up a darker blue. Um, actually, what I want to do is I want the same blue, but I want to adjust these down a bit. Okay, so we're in the same palette that way. A little bit different shade of blue. And then I'm going to make a spiral design. So let's turn this back on. Get it spinning. There we go. Now I have to adjust my speed of movement depending where I'm at. So in the center, it's going to be pretty fast, and then I'll move slower as I get to the outside. Okay, so I get started and pull it out. Okay, now I got a skip in that. I don't really like the look of that skip. So we're going to undo, undo, undo. Let's try that again. You get a couple undos, you don't get unlimited. There we go. That got a nice even set of dots. And then another thing I like to do is go over that with some smaller dots. To do that, I need another paintbrush. Some paintbrushes are in the shop, which is you pick up with the cell phone. I want painting tools. I want a little brush. Okay, set that down, set that down. Okay, this time I want the white, and I'm going to go over the blue dots with white dots. Come on, move that around. The uh, the palette tracks your head, so it can be a little tricky to get out of, out of your way sometimes. Okay, we're spinning. And uh, in this case, I'm left-handed, so my paintbrush is in my left hand. My right hand is crossed across my lap, being a brace for my left hand. So it's over here. Um, and I'm just using the arm as a brace to keep my elbow still on my left hand. That gives me a lot better control of the paintbrush. Okay, now this is not moving fast enough to do what I want. That's better. There we go. Get a nice smooth start. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we floated another set of dots on top of the first ones. That gives some really interesting color effects. And I usually like putting in some warm colors as well. In this case, I want them, I want fewer dots, so I'm going to move a lot quicker. Let's pick up some red. And some yellow. Yeah, I got a little bit up on the rim, 
which is not actually what I want. If I do the rim, I want to do it intentionally. So let's take those back out. I don't know why I've still got a little glitch flying around there. Took out most of it. Okay, back to the little dots. Let's see, I've got some red and yellow and orange. A little bit of a dark purple would go well with that. Now that's kind of a not the purple that I want. I want more of a natural purple. Uh, let's see. Here's a better purple. Too rich. So red and blue makes purple. Then the remaining slider impacts the saturation. So if I bring it up pretty close to the two, you know, average between them, we get something pretty close to a gray. If I go too high, of course, it takes over. But if it's sort of in the average between them, it's gray. And then as I take it down, the color of purple intensifies until it's a super rich purple. So I get to determine the saturation with this slider up to a point. So I want it somewhat saturated, but not that much. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now I want it darker. So more black means that both this one and this one have to go down. They need to stay in the same relationship to each other and preferably to the green. Um, but the whole thing needs to go to the left to be blacker. So from 99, we're taking it down to say 79-ish. Okay, so we dropped 20 off of it. So this one should be about 155. And then this one needs to drop proportionately, which is not quite the same. Okay, that's a nice rich purple. It's about the right intensity for the colors I've already got. And it's about the level of darkness I wanted for contrast. So what size dots do I want? Do I want little bitty purple dots? Do I want bigger purple dots? Let's see, I think I want to do the little bitty ones. So we'll start with those. I'm going to get a couple layers of them. There we go. Now I picked up the center a little better. Okay, and then what do I want on the rim? I think I want white dots on the rim, but I want bigger ones. So let's get the white. Now I'm going to have to start, pay close attention, and almost immediately stop, because I only want one ring of these. Okay, I missed just a little spot. Undo. Okay, that was a, li a little bit of doubling. Let's try it one more time. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nope. A little longer. One, two, one, two. Okay, that should have gotten it pretty close. Stop it and take a look. Okay, I've got a little bit there I can clean up. So I'll pick it up so I can hold on to it. I'm going to take out the doubled up dots. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. And I think the simplest way to clean that up is to add a little bit of blue, a little touch of this light blue. Uh, I can't seem to pick it up and hold it right, though. There we go. Okay, that was too much. Undo. We can do just the tip. Undo. Undo. Kind of wish I had an in-between brush size. 
Let's just take out the center. There we go. That looks nice and clean. All right. And the other thing it lets you do is use a stamp. These are stamps. I'm pretty fond of this cherry blossom in white. So you line it up, get it pretty close, get it where you want it, pull the trigger once, click, and it makes a stamp. Okay, so I pick it up and I stop painting. Let's fire it with a gloss glaze. I like to hold it to the side. There's going to be numbers here that give you points for it. And the points are what you spend in the shop to get inventory. So I hold it to the side so I can read it. So I decided it was a jar and 166 pottery points, which is actually quite nice. Um, uh, you get more pottery points for larger pieces, for pieces that you've used the trimmer on, for pieces that you've painted, and for pieces that you've used a stamper on. If you do all of that and you have a pretty good round piece, it's not real triangular, you'll get a pretty good points for it. So now I have this fired piece that's finished. It's got a pretty rough bottom, honestly. Uh, I, I tried to trim the bottom and I think I made it worse rather than better, but that's okay. So I want to use this in my Oculus Home. So I want to export an OBJ file. So I'm going to pull that and then I can archive it and it drops me back to set up play. Now if I want, I can look at my inventory and I can see the stuff that I've put in archive. You can also sell it, make in-game money from it, and buy stuff. Um, this first one is one that I did with coloring to indicate where the different parts are. So like there's a stripe here and there's an outside color and an inside color and a bottom color that's separate. And that was so that in this next step, when I take it into Blender and Photoshop, I can tell which parts of it I might want to paint an image on. And I can know what the shape of the pottery was and the different parts of it. Because I'll start with the image texture it has now. And this is the one I just did. We'll note that the inside has all these dots on it. The outside is a nice smooth blue. So I can cancel out of that, set that down. And now we're going to switch programs, which is probably going to mess with my streaming a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. So left menu, go back to the main menu, confirm. Back to this menu and exit out. Quit making pottery. Okay. Now, at this point, I need to get out of VR. The rest of my work occurs on the desktop, and I'll come back into VR to show the final result. Okay, VR headset is off and out of my way. Now I roll up to keyboard and mouse. Okay. So first of all, um, I've got a Python script that I wrote that relies on a Node.js library to convert the file format from that OBJ that we exported into the GLTF or GLB format that Oculus Home uses. So I'm going to fire off this little shortcut. It copies my file and does a conversion along the way. Okay, now I can find the file, converted file under Documents, Oculus Home, Import, and that would be this one that we just did. There's that bowl. So now we want to drop into Blender. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. We're going to open that file in Blender and go find its texture. Blender is a free 3D modeling program that you can use to do models and textures and a number of other interesting renders and things. 
In this case, I'm using a very, very simple version of it. Um, so new file, sculpting, gives me my basic setup. I don't need this quad sphere, I can delete it. And then I want to import G I GLTF, uh, GLB, GLTF file, documents, Oculus Home, import, grab my last file. And these are by date, which is why the last file is actually what I want. Import GLTF. Okay, and so it's there. There's our shape. Now, as far as mode, I need to get into texture paint mode instead of object mode. And you can see the texture is there, those dots that we painted on it. And then um, I need to find the other menu I need. Still fairly new to me, so I'm still figuring my way around. I need the scene view with all the nodes, and I need the little uh, image picker. Okay, let's see if I can find what I'm after. This would be a window. Um, that's not it. Seeing it there, no, I'm not. No, nope, edit mode's not what I want. Back to texture paint. Okay. No, nope, I'm gonna have to dig around and find my menu. You'll get a little intro to Blender along the way. I'm not sure how to bring back a uh, portion of the view that I'm used to seeing that I don't know why it went away. Shading, there we go. I had to move from sculpting to shading. In shading mode, you can still see the shape, you can still see the texture. Over here on the lower left, you can see the texture as a flat image, a rectangle image. That's the UV map, uh, which is how it maps the coordinates against the image. And that's the texture. And then uh, down here is this node graph. Um, this is all of the transformations that Blender is applying and all the, their configurations along the way to creating the final output object. So things generally flow from left to right. Uh, in this case, because I know how these particular pottery items tend to come into Blender, I know that I need either this or this uh, for the image, the texture image that we're seeing over here. Um. <coughs> You can kind of move stuff around if you need to. Um, it helps if I drag these up close together, you can see them. Um, so this is a base color and a normal map. The normal map is referring to a normal angle, meaning um, perpendicular, basically. Uh, so air, light that is bouncing off the surface may reflect or not, making it look textured or smooth or glossy. That's all controlled by the normal map. And so the normal map is basically the bump map. The base color is this texture that we see over here that we painted on by hand. So right now uh, the base color is blue. The other layer, other image we see in here that's sort of purplish is the bump map. And you'll notice over here, this one picks the bump map. So what we care about extracting to work on in Photoshop is the base color image. And so that's image zero. So we go over here, we make sure we're seeing image zero. We are. I'm going into this three lines menu. Image, save as. And I'm gonna go into my Blender work file and I'm gonna call this uh, flat wide jar base.png 
because it's file format PNG up here. Um, I leave all the rest of that as defaults. And I save as image. Okay, so now I've done the extraction. Now I want to flip over to Photoshop. In Photoshop, I've preloaded this space image that I want to use as the other part of the texture. So we're going to open up that image we just exported, flat wide jar based PNG. And you'll notice that for the most part, they're straight horizontal lines. Um, these at the top are slightly angled. That's an effect of the spiral. If I had drawn a perfect circle instead of a spiral, the circle would have expanded out like these dots right here in the middle, these white dots, to be effectively a straight line across the image. So this part I've highlighted at the bottom that's plain, that's the outside of the dish. And the upper part with all the dots on it is the inside of the dish. So if I want to put a star pattern on the outside of the dish, then what I want to do is replace this bottom part here with that star pattern. So I want layers. Um, I generally want to duplicate the background and get rid of the locked version because it makes a lot of things easier. Now I want to bring in this star. So select all, copy, paste it as its own layer, drop it down underneath. Now on the background layer, I want to remove that blue, revealing what's underneath it. Change to my movement palette. Now I can transform, let's scale, because that star image is huge. Um, so let's bring that down. Actually, I want to do it proportionately. Let me get use the right key commands. Move it over. Okay, still need it a little bigger. There we go, we got complete coverage. And now I can put, position it. Now, knowing this is going into a round pottery, I probably kind of want the round thing in the middle because it'll look better, because um, it'll be more even. Let's go ahead and make this big enough. Okay, so this part is basically centered. So this area will end up on the center bottom of the jar, hopefully. And this, along these white dots, will be the rim that's the top edge. From prior work on these textures, I determined that the mapping basically goes from this is the center bottom, and, and as it goes up, it goes around the outside of the pottery, up to the rim in roughly the middle, and then the rest of this traces its way into the very center of the pottery. So technically, I suppose, if I want that near the center and the bottom, I should put it more down there. We might get some interesting distortion effects. We'll see. Give it a check mark so it stays put. And then I can save over the same image if I want to. I haven't really destroyed anything interesting, so that's fine. Go ahead and save. Of course, now it's a Photoshop format, so I need to either compact the layers or do a save as. In this case, I'm going to compact the layers because I'm not expecting to come back to this. I can save. Okay, that's updated. I don't need that one anymore. Okay, back to Blender. Now we need to import that image. So we did a save as, that was the export. Now we need to open, grab that one, open the image, and then over here, uh, that's not quite what I wanted. Okay, so it is showing here. That's fine. So it's in his image zero. So now over here on base color, uh, is this where I have to open it? There we go. Open image. I'm trying to make sure I get the right setup here. Usually I see the thumbnail update, but maybe I'm just not seeing it very accurately. There we go. 
That's better. So I had to hit this button. Huh, that's odd. Um, okay, so flat, repeat, single image, linear, flat, okay. But yeah, generally after you've done an open, um, you'll pick the image in the list. And then we do save as. So this was a wide, flat jar dot blend. So this is the blender image, blender project really. It's all of everything. You'll notice in this render menu window now you can see the stars very roughly on the outside of the bowl. We still have the dots on the inside. And then once we've saved the blender project so we can come back to it if we screwed something up. And then we'll save the G export the GLTF and then wide flat jar dot GLB export to this format. All the defaults are fine. Okay. And then that should have gone back to our Oculus Home directory. Oculus Home import. So refresh this. Bowl of stars, jar with stars. Okay, it didn't get here, so it's in the wrong directory. So let's export that again. File, export, GLB, GLTF. Ah, it's in Blender work. Okay. Documents, Oculus Home import. Put it in the right place. Okay. There it is, wide flat jar. It's still got the same shape. So now we go back into uh, VR. I'll need this Oculus mirror so you can see what's going on in my Oculus Home. And we will import that thing and take a look at it in virtual reality. Take me a moment to get my headset back on. Okay, got my hands back. Undo that accidental move. All right. So inventory, my imports. Get this uh, um, copyright disclaimer. And then wide flat jar. There it is. And it's got stuff on the bottom. Now, one thing to think about is this little center area was an entire horizontal line in our texture image. It all got compressed down into that little circle. That's a distortion effect of this distance versus this distance versus this distance for texture. So if you're going between rectangular and circular, you're going to have to understand that there's a distortion that happens. There are mathematical ways to change your texture image so that you don't get the distortion. So for instance, we could map it so that this is right here and spread out accordingly. Um, but I haven't developed any scripts that understand that level of projection. Um, kind of a rectangular coordinates to circular coordinates issue. Um, but as far as the basics, whoops, that is not the grab I wanted. There we go. As far as the basics, we've got our jar. Um, it's got the design with the little uh, cherry blossom in the center and the stars on the outside where we put them and the little white dots around the surface. Now, um, using these at Oculus Home, uh, you've got 
whichever hand grabs it with is going to get the rotator scale feature. You're in rotation here on the left. If you hit your trigger finger, it switches to scale. When you're scaling, it can be a little confusing at first. You have to push in one direction and then hold. It won't start to scale until you hold it for a little bit. So I can make it bigger, which is how I made the pool in the middle. And you can grab it and flip it over and take a look at the pictures. You can kind of leave it floating in the air if you want. Um, you can grab it and make it smaller. You can grab it and rotate it. So flip back to rotate and it'll spin whichever way you want to spin it. And scale it. You can push it out in rotate view. You can push it away or pull it back. And I guess you can in scale too. And then left, right to make it change size. And then let's say I want to flip it over. I can do that. And I've got, you know, a coffee table or something. I could scale it back down a little bit. There's a good size for a coffee table. And so I can have a star colored coffee table. I can flip it up, have a uh, stars on the wall. I can flip it any which way I want to flip it. They're actually easier to flip when they're smaller. I can have a cute little candy bowl. Uh, where's my table? Table's over there. So I can put down a candy dish on the table. And so that's it for a uh, intro to putting custom textures on pottery for Oculus Home. The pottery app is pretty awesome. It lets you do a lot of cool stuff. Um, sometimes the shape that you're looking for doesn't work out and you'll just need to start over and keep trying. Every now and then it'll collapse completely and give you something totally crazy that you can throw away. So that's it.